listening to the Construction Big Breakfast, where we give you a hearty serving of insider tips and business strategies to help fuel your day so you can thrive in the construction industry. Now, here's your host. Hi, everyone, and thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Tip Top Tim Fitch, and welcome to the Construction Big Breakfast. Today, we're going to be diving some really interesting topics related to Graham Construction Canada, because there's obviously uh, there's, a, there's another very famous one in the UK, which I don't think are connected. Uh, we're going to be talking about inflation and its effect on early contractor involvement, uh, resourcing in Canada, and uh, also strategy and how acquisitions support the strategy of Graham. And finally, we're going to be touching on mental health and how uh, Graham have tackled that during the pandemic. So joining me today is our very special guest, Andy Truick, the CEO of Graham. Welcome to the podcast, Andy. Can you give our listeners a little introduction about yourself? Thanks, Tim. And um, uh, pleased to be here. I, um, I've been CEO of Graham for the last three years. I've uh, been in Canada for seven. Um, prior to that, I worked in the Middle East uh, for five years. Uh, and before that, then, obviously, in the UK, um, spent um, all my career in the UK with one particular contractor uh, for 27 years. Um, worked my way through from being a graduate civil engineer um, all the way to um, position today. So um, uh, a pleasure to be here. Terrific. Thanks, Andy. It's great to have you on today. The first question before we get into the uh, proper topics we've just discussed is one that we ask all of our guests. What did you have for breakfast today? Well, actually, this morning I um, I met uh, one of our board members. We have a board meeting this week, so I like to um, I like to understand what the difficult questions are going to be um, at the board meeting. So um, I'm, I met him for breakfast. So um, um, we had uh, we, we had omelets uh, at a, a local uh, a local cafe here in Calgary. Terrific. Well, I, I also met one of my colleagues and uh, we I had a proper full English fry up, which uh, set me up for the day. Well, I miss I, I miss uh, here in Canada. I miss um, English bacon and black pudding. Um, we don't we don't get it quite the same here. So um, I'm very jealous. Well, we have to make do with the lower quality maple syrup over here. So, you know, there's pros and cons, isn't there? Absolutely. Anyway. Let's just get into the meat and potato, or as if for our vegan listeners, that would be the potato and the potato of the conversation. Um, inflation, how's it impacting Canadian construction? Um, well, a lot, first of all. Um, we, you know, the Canadian, you know, Canadian markets are very much aligned to commodities. So, you know, the, the oil and gas pricing, um, we have, you know, certainly metals, heavy metals, um, and and then uh, potash and and, and agriculture. All, um, all really influence our economy a, a great deal. So, uh, as we've seen those prices increase, we've seen obviously infl inflationary inflationary pressures, um, and and I think we were always expecting that after COVID a little bit, you know, that that would be coming. Um, and we've obviously that's been mirrored again with the, you know, the the, the political and uh, and the war and uh, situation in in Eastern Europe. So um, certainly it's a, a, a sort of live topic. The consequences of all that for us are obviously then uh, you know, really pricing of 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 of, uh, of uh, materials and um, and so the the whole way that we work. And where we've tried to position Graham is that we wanted to be really an ECI contractor. And um, that was really a, a, a sort of strategic move we made in our business to get really involved in the, 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 the contract models that have an ECI component, pre-construction component. And so that's um, that's really le leading us to be um, challenging budgets with owners that were probably created for them 18 months even perhaps two years ago so you can imagine that you know the difference in what we're presenting today to what what those budgets were then 
you know, we're seeing, you know, 30 to 50 percent increases in budgets, which means well, that there's a whole slowdown of, of construction, you know, physical construction um, taking place while owners perhaps de-scope or, or have to go back to their stakeholders to get more funds for projects to come on stream. So it is a it is a difficult time. Um, we will we'll, we'll, you know, we're working hard. I think it you know, it drives us to be much more collaborative, sharing information around costs um, and really, you know, really value engineering projects to death in order to get those solutions that an owner will, you know, will then have the right amount of funds for the project to go forward into construction. So um, I think we're learning new skills in this process, albeit it's it's very challenging. Um, you know, we've got examples of um, one particular project. We were building a, um, a school, a, a university block with classrooms at the bottom and accommodation above and and basically just to get the the project within budget they've taken away the accommodation so we're just really building a, a series of new university classrooms um other examples you know we have value engineered you know a project taken 30 million dollars out of a, a, a sort of 200 million dollar project we're still about five million over budget from what their original um you know their original uh, level was set and you know hopefully they'll go back to their stakeholders and be able to get that level but we've you know we've value engineered it to death to get that 30 million so lots of pressures in play do you find where you're working in the eci mode um i mean talked a lot about value engineering but the big savings are usually value management, aren't they? Where the, they go back to the business case and say, do we really need that? I mean, you mentioned taking the accommodation out of a, a, a university project. Is that, are you seeing, are you getting involved in those sorts of decisions or you presume you're informing those sorts of decisions with your cost management um, service? Yeah, I mean, we're trying hard to, you know, give the, give the owner options um, I mean, that's always, you know, we can't make those those, you know, those fundamental decisions ourselves. It's, it's their facility or, you know, it's their yeah. asset. But what we're trying to do is, is you know, give them, you know, a, 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 enough options that they can they can pick what suits them or a combination of what suits them. So um, absolutely, you know, we are, you know, we're trying to advise and and yes, sometimes it's it's you know sometimes it's scope um sometimes it's it's perhaps you know leave something as it is in, in i can think of an instance where you know we've been doing a new plant facility and we've just said we'll leave all the administration alone let's let's keep that um and and just deal with the plant itself so there's there's you know there's lots of ways to to get around this um, we're just trying to be creative and imaginative to give the owner as many options as we can. Well, I mean, that's what it takes when you've got periods of intense change, isn't it? The thing, you know, things have got to be rethought through. I mean, what we were both at the CCA conference uh, in Vancouver a couple of weeks ago now. Um, one thing that came out loud and clear was an absolute dire need for more resources, human resources in the construction sector in Canada. I mean, I guess you you haven't escaped that. No, I think um, it, it, there's, there's, there's again, you, you look back to the sort of COVID period and and people did drift out the industry, I think. Um, there were certain certain sectors, sectors that did sort of closed down somewhat um and so that resource you know migrated away from the industry um and and obviously found other things to do so we've got to draw that back initially bring bring that you know that, that resource back into into work um so that's a challenge um then there's the stimulus and 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 the and the you know the programs that the the relevant governments that government departments want to you know stimulate the economy with um 
I think they, you know, I think from a from an owner perspective, there's not a lot of thought goes into, you know, how that how that work is going to come out and how it's going to affect the marketplace. So there's a challenge, you know, there's a challenge there that we've got to, you know, the whole industry is ramping up. How do we, you know, how do we, how do we, um, how do we deal with that? And then I think there's just an aging population issue where, you know, we've got to bring more people in, you know, construction isn't as, you know, as, as attractive as perhaps, um, you know, some other sectors, um, you know, Calgary um, has been depressed for some time um, over the last few years because of, you know, the, the oil and gas market's been down. Um, different now with oil at, you know, $120 a barrel and people, you know, seeing that, you know, seeing that, you know, the sector picking up, um, but it has been depressed. And so, you know, this market locally here has been, um, you know, really trying to promote things like tech and IT. Um, and so we've, we, you know, we're f always fighting against, you know, other other sectors to attract young people. In 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 the US, um, you know, we, we have a big business in Seattle and and there you've got the, um, you know, you've got the, you know, the really big IT companies like, you know, Microsoft, Google, um, those people. And so it's a real challenge just to get, you know, the normal back office people, you know, administrators, um, you know, safety people, uh, procurement professionals, just, you know, the, the people that aren't specialists to construction because they, the, there's such a, um, you know, the, the attraction uh, from those IT companies and they pay, you know, they pay a different level of salary to ourselves. Seattle is a you know a big city. It's got an aging infrastructure, so you know there's a lot of investment in infrastructure for us to 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 bid on and, and work on. So you know it's a real fight for resources in those locations. So I think all across you know North America, Canada, and the U.S. Um, the resource you know resources are a problem, and and I I found it fascinating just putting it, things into context um, a few months ago. Um, we, we recently acquired a business which has an office in in California. So I I got the opportunity just after Christmas to visit that office for the first time, and you know we hadn't been in California before, and we didn't know, you know, we don't know that market that well. So it was a good education for myself. Um, but when you when you hear the story that you know the population of California is 30, 33 million. You know, it's very similar to the population of the whole of Canada, and you know, so you it really does put a picture on where are the people going to be in Canada to do the work that we need to do. It's it's a real challenge, and you know, um, you know, I do think you know the federal government needs to look at the immigration policies to really attract people into the in, into the country to you know really um, utilize. On, on on the construction industry. But interestingly, there was a side conversation I had with somebody at the CCA, the, the, the Canadian Construction Association conference in Vancouver uh, that we were both at, who said there was a backlog of 1.8 million uh, applications for visas that has built up, I guess, because of people haven't been at work because of COVID. So there's no, it's not like there aren't plenty of people who like to go to Canada to work. There's, obviously, there's a bit of a bottleneck there. Absolutely, I think you know um, we see you know we see that um, um, you know in our own business. I see that personally, actually. Um, you know, we're we're applying to be Canadian citizens, and our you know our our application has been in for a number of years now. So you know we we're waiting to 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 get that ourselves. So um, it does. You know, it does apply across the board. Across the board. Okay, that's been really interesting. You mentioned one thing about Seattle. Now, coincidentally, I'm flying there on this coming Saturday with my family because we're on the way up to Whistler. But uh, about infrastructure, and of course, there was a lot of talk about um, trade infrastructure, uh, which means, you know, how, how do you get goods and exports out of Canada? either south, but more interestingly nowadays, east or west. 
I suppose this ties in with the revival, albeit it may be only medium term in the oil and gas sector, because people want Canadian gas in particular, uh, because to reduce the reliance on the stuff from the east. Um, do you see do you see that impact in the construction, or or are there? Um, I, I sense there were planning type problems under the Canadian system of get, getting pipelines across various you know, multiple territories at the same time. Yeah, so the, the, there's, you know, Canada is, has got a lot of natural resources. Um, there's been lots of discussion around how do we, you know, how do we free that that resource to, to service um, not you know the Canadian economy and and other economies. The you know the the political situation in the east is now creating a lot more conversation around around that. And um, we've got a federal government that's that's not been in favour of you know certainly um, driving and, and promoting that type of infrastructure. We've got a changing government in the U.S. Um, from the Trump to the Biden administrations, which stopped stopped a pipeline as well. So, you know, if you look back at you know, twelve months, it, it was it was it was pretty desperate, really. You know, the the the, the situation, the current situation, you know, leads to a lot more questions initially, and and but there but there are lots of solutions to to try and um, you know solve those. So, you know. Um, North America surprisingly has imported, um, you know, uh, raw materials like oil and gas in, into the continent. Um, you know, should we be doing that when we're self-sufficient? And th and then the, this whole conversation about you know energy security becomes a big topic. Um, we can support or we can supply and support the U.S. with a with more oil and gas if, if pipelines were allowed. I think those conversations are starting to be had. And, you know, there's certainly a, a large amount of that infrastructure already been built. Um, it just needs to be completed. And then, you know, should we be putting more pipelines in east, uh, west to east in order to supply perhaps Europe? Um, we've got the we've got the commodity and we've got to find a way ourselves um, if that's acceptable to get those pipelines, you know, put in play in in our country. So um, there is the, the solutions are there. I think that there's a lot of conversation around, you know, the acceptability of that from a federal government. You know, we we know that there have been schemes for us to support Europe with um, um, LNG plants uh, here in here in Canada to supply Western Europe. Um, they went, you know, they went off track about 12 months ago, um, but could quite easily be um, re-erected. So I think there's lots of um, there's lots of um, um, things still being thought through where that ends up. I think those questions are still not answered. Um, that would be great opportunity for a construction company like ourselves. We would certainly be, you know, we certainly have a part to play in that. We we were part of the construction. Uh, program on the west coast of BC, um, building the um, LNG Canada facility. Um, we we built, um, uh, you know, a, a portion of of that major plant there, which is still under construction. We did quite That's a lot right. of the we had quite a lot of the advanced works there, and and you know we built actually we built the uh, we constructed the the the, the reinforced concrete. Um, LNG tank. So, you know, we have got we've got a lot of experience in those in those markets. So it'd be great opportunities if that, you know, did. But, but to some extent, we're at the, you know, we're at the beck and call of our political masters on some of these things. But hopefully they'll watch. Yeah, yeah. We'll send them a link. We'll send them a yeah, link. Yeah, yeah. So that moves us neatly on to another little thing that we uh, teased everyone with at the start, which is Graham's strategy, which I know you've got a, a, a bit carefully thought through strategy about the direction and what you're trying to achieve. And you've got a very interesting component of that or to support that, which is acquisitions. So can you just tell the viewers a little bit about that, Andy? Yeah, so, so I think, um, you know, we've been very clear around um, 
you know, having a strategy, being very deliberate about delivering on that strategy. So we, you know, we we've um, we have a process where we 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 um, we we look at what we we want to do and where we want to be and what we want, you know, where where that takes us. Two things really were were really really important to us, probably starting about five years ago, but um, we've 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 sort of majored on this quite a lot in the last few years. You know, certainly we are a Western Canadian business, and we're based in Calgary. And um, and going back to some of the things we've just spoken about, Tim, um, you know, we're very susceptible to the commodity pricing um in the economy at any one time so if you know if oil prices are up then you know the alberta um economies it does well that trickles through into the sort of building and commercial side about 12 months later but then you know if if oil prices fall then you know we're in a position where you know again the economy comes down then that migrates out through alberta to you know the rest of western canada so we were very susceptible to that market and so we we, we started on a, a a strategy to be very deliberate about diversification moving our business um so it was not solely uh, fixed on the alberta economy so geography and um and also sector so two key things for us then 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 secondly um we had we had been very successful for a while in the p3 market um the big uh infrastructure social and linear infrastructure projects and and that was we were seeing that um over a period of time that the risk profile of those projects were moving you know you know the risk was being passed much more onto the onto the contractors so you know, again, we felt that was, you know, those 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 projects were becoming really, um, uh, you know, they weren't attractive to us. So we needed to move our business back to, um, you know, a balance. And, and I talked about, you know, the ECI work um, earlier. And so we wanted to be, you know, have more bias on things that we can control. And we have a we have a strap line for that about control delivery. So those two things diversification in that control delivery have driven our strategy for the past past sort of five uh, five years and and certainly over the last three years we've delved into that a lot more um we 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 review where where we are with that and there's a you know we we work on a series of objectives that come from those thoughts which then drive our business um and so in order to position ourselves in contracts that are that type of contract that that sort of lower risk type of contract and certainly position us in a um in a sector um whether it from a diversification perspective or a geography then in order to do that we've really looked at acquisitions um to move the business in that way and and over the last um, four years we've done um, four key acquisitions that have have done that so we completed in, in uh, just after Christmas this year um, the the acquisition of a, um, a maintenance and uh, industrial turnaround business uh, which is all low risk uh, long-term contracts um, which absolutely aligns itself to that risk profile that model that we 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 um we wanted and we, we the first one of those acquisitions i spoke about was a small version of that four years ago it taught us about the the sector taught us about the industry we saw the bigger player and actually we then pursued the bigger player and 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 acquired that um at, at, at the turn of the year so you know, lots of deliberate thinking around making sure that that was where we wanted to be and where we wanted to go. Yeah. So that that's you know that's one 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 thing. Um, and then uh, in terms of um, another another sort of example, we um, we look we, we in Graham. So we like we like that sector. Um, we saw. 
um, you know, we could we could expand our um, uh, diversity um, from a geography geography perspective in that sector into the US. So again, we were very deliberate and we went to try and find a partner that would give us that uh, footprint um, in the US. And, and so we, we actually um, then uh, found a business called Maltz in Colorado, um, which is a pure water business. Um, and we aligned that to us. Um, the good thing about that specifically was it was, you know, self-perform, uh, it's a self-perform model. Again, a model that Graham likes to do. We like to deliver the work where we can ourselves. So that alignment was good. And we saw in, in, in Maltz, um, you know, a, an organization that was, it had a, a, a leadership and, and a small amount of uh, ownership in that organization. And we could then bring that ownership into Graham because Graham is an em employee owned business. And so that alignment in culture and, 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 and people having skin in the game was really important to them and to us. So that again, would made it very successful. And uh, I mean, I think we would like to try and, you know, identify other similar organizations like Malt to, to, Malt to build on that, on, on that strategy again. So if you're listening, to this and you'd like to be part of the growing group well we'll put the details at the end and maybe yeah. that, that you might get a one or two inquiries that'd be great for the last topic that was tremendous and the last topic we we're going to talk about was uh, mental health because i know that graham has uh, during the the pandemic and the lockdown had time to think and has come up with some interventions i think that would be of interest to our viewers and listeners. If you just give us a little bit of a heads up on that. Yeah, um, there's certainly no doubt uh, during the pandemic, you know, I think people's lives have become more stressful. Um, we were we were actually just talking about this yesterday, but on on the journey, the journey that we've been through um, through COVID, um, you know, we've we've been really focused on making sure that all the projects um, have you know kept going through that this that situation and and so we've you know we've we've asked a lot of our people um all the time to keep going you know certainly on our projects um and we've thrown at them lots of other things you know we've we've thrown at them all the the new you the, the new health and safety arrangements we've you know we've we've asked them to track and monitor and record and you know do so much more and then work in different you know with different ppe in different situations we put a lot on our people which is stressful we've you know we've had people who have then you know we've, we've pushed out of the workplace and they've had to go into their own environments to you know conduct their business and and that's stressful with you know family and children and you know whatever in the in their lives we've we've had to do that so we've definitely recognized that there's more on people um through the process and 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 subsequently and and we were we were good at helping people when that all you know that when all that materialized um and that issue came to the fore what we weren't good at was actually helping them at the very beginning so looking for the signs you know helping them not get to a crisis point but actually just you know supporting them and 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 recognizing that there might be an issue starting to happen um not waiting till actually they you know that they, they, they um you know they fell over so that's been that's been certainly something that we've we've recognized through this and so we've we didn't have the tools initially and we've we've certainly looked at that um particular issue and tried to um um do something do something about that so we we we, we found um um a local calgary um organization which is got the tools to support our business it's a you know it's a it's an app on your phone if you're feeling you know you've got some 
you know some situation brewing you could there's some some clear steps that you can do and it's even it's just as simple as just taking some time out and going for a walk but it, it'll it'll pick up if you answer some simple questions that there's a you, you know you've got some challenges and then it it goes through you know further and deeper steps if 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 you're starting to feel um you know the situation um, worsening so um i think that's you know we've added that to our suite of things that we do, can do for people and and uh, you know i hope that helps obviously a lot of this information is confidential but we're just trying to recognize um talk about it because people don't want to talk about these things all the time um so get the awareness of you know there's something there for people to help them with um we've always been good at the back end um as well but you know we don't want that yeah. situation to arise so we're just trying to really um you know lift the profile because it is out there it is an it, it is an issue and I, I i would i would question you know any family that's been through the last two years that there isn't you know there isn't a mental health issue somewhere it might not be you as an individual but within your family group there's there's some reaction taking place um you know through this through this particular you know what we've gone through and i i you know personally i you know i see um you know i see my children my teenagers certainly suffer through through this covid you know through the covid process you know lack of sports lack, you know lack of real interaction to be able to do so, so you know develop as a teenager i think that's been a big issue for for teenagers and i do think some of the consequences of all this all this stuff that we've been through won't won't come out yet it's going to come out in other shapes and forms and and I, and I, I don't know what that I don't know what that'll be so you're just trying to equip you equip yourself as much as you can with the you know with the tools that are available and on that note I mean that on that positive thing that Graham's done I think it's time to wrap up this conversation which has been fantastically insightful so thank you for joining me today Andy where can our viewers and listeners get in touch with you if they'd like to learn more? Is there, is there some addresses we can put in the show notes? Yeah, we've got we've got some information addresses and in, in our website, so um, uh, we can we can we can certainly um, do that. We'll post, those, we'll post those in the show notes. Yeah, that's terrific, wonderful. So, and to all of our listeners today, thank you for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Construction Big Breakfast. We have a new episode published most weeks. So click the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss a single episode. And while you're at it, we'd appreciate a five star review. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please like it and share it as this helps us to reach more listeners and viewers. If you're interested in being a guest on the podcast or looking to collaborate in other ways, visit our website. The link again is below and uh, fill out the contact form and one of my team will be in touch. So until next time. Bye. Want to learn more about how Invent can help your business maximize its bottom line? Head on over to www.invent.com and get in touch with our team today. Thanks for joining us this week on the Construction Big Breakfast. Make sure to visit our website, www.invent.com, where you can subscribe to the Construction Big Breakfast on all platforms so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a positive rating. Or if you'd simply share it with a friend, that would help us out too. Be sure to tune in for our next episode.